This time on the Auto Edit Jeep, we're going to be going up by one inch on the lift and longer by 10 inches on the control arms. And you are going to notice that added length and performance. Wait, that's what she said. <laughs> Howdy guys, I'm Jeep and Jason. Welcome to a very special episode of the Auto Edits Jeep Build Up where we're gonna take it to the next level. This is the one I've really been looking forward to. Now we're getting the foundation stuff done. You saw the axle upgrade, so I have the Ultimate Dana 44 up there. I'm still working on picking the right rear thing. It's pretty, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a, a Dana 60 based rear axle, but this right here is going to take the Jeep to the next level in performance handling wise for all of the daily driving stuff plus off-road capability. Um, we're going long arms. Yeah, it, this is good. Now we're lucky. JK owners, uh, this is a really good platform. It comes from the factory with what we would consider or what would be considered a mid-length arm. So it's not a short arm. So you TJ owners, you know, uh, those short arms that that thing comes with really is uh, the limiting factor to the articulation and why those things are a little bit of a handful in the combination driving. So JK's were a pretty good platform. Now this is the long arm kit from Metal Cloak. And then I went and took it up a notch and I'm gonna be trying out the lock and load option that they've offered. Now I got to see this in action from, you know, a guy that you may have heard of and known uh, is it knows his way around a four x four and that's Ian Johnson runs this on his shop truck and on Trail to SEMA a couple years ago. I really watched that in action. It was really kind of cool uh, to see that work. It was pretty, it, it just checks the boxes for me. It's, uh, you can lock it, we'll do more. Once we get this on, you could lock it so it's just uh, a solid control arm and then you can unlock it to give you added flex. There's a heavy duty spring inside here. So this is a really neat option here, but mostly like the star of the show for me right now is just being able to go long arms in the front. So now I'm gonna be trying out the Metal Cloak DB3 drop brackets for the rear, and that's gonna simulate a long arm geometry with stock length control arms back there because of the way that the drop brackets work. I'll show you guys uh, how those install, pretty easy. That's other the other part of this. Uh, normally to go long arms, it's a very involved install. Today, we're gonna do some cutting, a, a small amount of welding that's not structural, so anybody could do it with a 110, that's a 110 welder, that's a, a plug into a regular socket welder. Um, we're gonna do it all right here in the garage. So that's one of the, des the very desirable things about this kit. And then obviously, I'm gonna be going with the Metal Cloak 4.5 inch lift springs. I've been super happy with the way this thing rides. So this is something I would consider to be a weekend project project for us average mechanical mechanically capable people. Uh, the one specialty part that I had to get for this that I know that we're gonna need, other than like a, a small time welder, um, some cutting discs and stuff, that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. But these right here, I got some 10 ton jack stands because you can't lift the frame from your normal spot. Where you're gonna be mounting these things and, and make room for your long arms here kind of gets in the way of that. So I invested, these are 220 bucks for these 10 ton jack stands, but it's because they go up high enough. You could probably find something. Uh, there's been a bit of a drama trying to find jack stands lately since the whole recall thing um, at the Harbor Freight. So I got some 10 ton jack stands. These things cost real money. That's kind of a, a heads up. You're going to need to be creative on how you lift your Jeep and make sure that your Jeep is stable and in up in the air and gives you the room. What we're gonna do now is we'll go ahead and take the track bar, get the thing, the suspension and the axle drooped out but supported, and we're gonna take the lower control arms off first and leave the uppers attached. I'll loosen them but leave them attached. Okay, I have basically most of the things that I can cut metal with over here. I have an angle grinder, a plasma torch, and a sawzall. This is the, the stock control, lower control arm mount. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install this guy, this pocket, way back here. See the difference here? This is a big deal in, and believe it or not, it's not just for the off-road. This long arm will actually be even better for all of the highway and twisty roads. Uh, your driving manners are gonna be 
just increased and improved with this thing. And <laughs> that's actually the thing I'm looking most forward to. So check this out. So let's get this out of the way and show you that will go in there and then swing all the way back to here. And that's why we have to cut this thing off so we can get our up travel out of this thing. But look how cool that is. That gives you a much more natural, uh, uh, the correct geometry and a much more natural uh, progression through the suspension travel. So that's why this is such a big deal. But for now, we're gonna attack this guy right here and get it ready for paint. So we're gonna just cut it as best we can. We'll grind it, make it smooth and purty, and then fog some paint over it so it, it won't rust, and then come back here to our mount. While we're in metalworking mode, I'm gonna go ahead and prep the next little place where we're actually gonna do some welding in a minute and just gonna go ahead and grind that off. And that's this hole right before the cross member here. You'll see in a minute. All right, so we're losing light. It's dark out, it's five o'clock, but I'm gonna keep going. I'd like to see um, if I can do, like I say, this is a weekend job. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get this done because we're gonna install this pocket here. This is for the lower control arm rear mount. And this tucks up in here. And we're gonna go ahead and put this little guy, this is a little frame standoff that goes in here. And then this is the last bit of welding. Then that way, my goal tonight is get that stuff done, little spray paint let it dry overnight, and then hit it hard tomorrow and assemble it. So support the cross member here and pull the bolts that support, that go into the frame rail. Now I have the metal coat cross member. I highly recommend that. It's a really beefy piece. So I've been very happy with it. So this sucker goes right up in here and then you just use the stock bolts here to get this located. So the kit has one more bolt to capture the top of this thing up here through this frame hole. And that's when you use this little uh, standoff to go inside there. And then you're just gonna weld this section up just to keep it in place. It's not super structural. Uh, so let's get that into place. All right, now that I got this thing exactly where I want it, I could pull this thing out, do my welding, and also get some paint done. And you're gonna do this on both sides. So there you go. So you have that, that sucker is in place. And so we'll just weld around this perimeter here and just make sure that that doesn't go anywhere. Well, there you go. Uh, that's a good first day. I, get, I keep getting fooled by starting later in the day, but there you go. We'll let that dry overnight and we'll pick up tomorrow morning with just assembling all this stuff and we'll be slapping this up on. You can see the hole here blends right into the frame. Looks fantastic. It looks like it's supposed to be there and that's great. And then this will bolt up in place. Long arms and then we move to the back. Back's easy. So this was all the heavy lifting. Now it's done tomorrow. It's all glory, bolting on some gold goodness. All right, see you in the morning. All right, good morning. Well, we're about to slap on some golden goodness now. It's time to just start assembling this stuff. All the heavy lifting and grinding and welding is done. Uh, the Everything looks pretty good. So we're just gonna get under here and we're gonna install these things in place and then just slowly tighten them down. Put this thing in place. Throw this thing in. 
lines up good. All right, here's a quick pro tip on how to get your suspension stuff dialed in ahead of time or, or stack the deck in your favor. Now, Metal Cloak wants you to do a starting eyelet to eyelet measurement of 33 and a quarter. Now, it's just good to just make them identical when you do each side. That way you have a really good starting point. If it's a little off, then you, you know, something else may be wrong. But right now, the best way that I found to just make sure that you have both your arms at this at the, the same length is to put it like a dowel or a bolt through there. And then what I'll do is measure. So I, I've already measured these things, but so you want, Metal Cloak wants these 33 and a quarter, center to eyelet, center to eyelet. And then this way, I can just double check that I got that. And I'll do that for everything, for all the different measurements. And these I'll just use a bolt. But this is a cool little trick right here just to make sure that everything's square as it's going in. It makes it easier once you start trying to get everything lined up later. So we'll start with that measurement and get these in. All right, let's get this sucker in there. Front side. I feel like I should make some sound effects for lock and load. Uno. All right, so Pinto doesn't want to hang out in the garage with me, but when her little buddy Reed comes over from across the street, her favorite little human, yeah, she's out there hanging out with him. Now she wants to be back out here. <laughs> Thanks, Pinto. What we have right now, really quick, is I have it at a simulated ride height. It's just estimated. So I went from what it was at the 3.5 and just added 1.1 1 .1 inch, sorry. And so right now I have everything kind of squared up. And same as if you watch the axle video, diagonal measurements, square up your axle. Uh, right now I'm do using a level and I know that I have the, cha the Jeep chassis just about, okay, zero. So the Jeep chassis right now is, is level. Usually there's gonna be a slight raise in the back for day-to-day -day driving uh, because of that. The springs are gonna have a little bit of extra height to them to allow for loading this thing up. But so right now I'm just gonna get a baseline with the Jeep chassis at zero, 5.2 two degrees of positive caster in this thing, and that's tilted, the, the steering angle is tilted back a little bit, and that's a really good uh, starting point. I like that, it was perfect before, so that's what we're gonna kinda go for, and that's by just adjusting all of this stuff and all of these things. So right now, I have the axle, the bottom measurement didn't change from the recommended, the upper I actually tilted back a little bit, so that's how I know that is good to go. So now we'll go ahead and let this thing droop. And then we can put our springs in, shocks in, track bar. Now a lot of you guys were concerned that I wasn't going a full hydro assist here. And I'm not opposed to that. I just don't think I need that yet. I mean, I think that I definitely want to upgrade the steering box, but I don't think I need full hydro assist yet. I'm not saying I don't want it or don't need it. It's just big and let's sneak up on all of these things, you know? Like part of this is to do some big ticket items, like doing a, the full suspension is, is a big ticket item. Doing the axle, another big ticket item. So, you know, just kind of sneaking up on it and uh, we'll see. Let's take it on a few more trips just like this and see how it does. Okay, so moving to the rear, it's time to install these pretty radical DB3 brackets. Now, what we're doing here is we're simulating a long arm by cheating the angle. So what we're gonna do is instead of having long arms go just like we, I, I showed you on the front where the long arm would go from here instead of mounting up here to the stock locations, they would have to mount way up here. 
And that's a pretty invasive install. These little things, what they'll do is they'll create that same geometry by dropping, see how this is the upper control arm bracket? It now moves it to there. And so it gives you for a lifted Jeep, the ideal geometry on your control arms without having to create a bunch of stuff down here to hang up on. You'll have this one lower spot here where the lower control arm has to go lower, but it's got a cool skid and it's got angled things here so you can bash it on rocks, it's gonna be fine. If you think you're gonna hang it up on stuff, um, you're driving, you're a driver. Drive around, <laughs> figure it out. This is, this is a pretty cool little thing. So now here is the trick the trick to installing this. Now I, I look, I always really like go through the instructions, especially during videos like this. I double check them, triple check them, make sure everything looks good. So now what they want you to do here is just go ahead and bolt these on. There's little spacers inside here, but I'm gonna call an audible here and change things up. So what you need to do is make room for the upper control arm bolt to fit inside the frame hole here. And what they do, uh, what, what the instructions recommend is just bolting this in place, getting it here, and then dr drilling with a 9 16th bit through here. Now I'm not gonna do that because I'm a little meticulous about stuff like that because I wouldn't be able to paint back in there to cover up any of the bare metal. And I don't wanna take the chance of galling up these holes here as I drill with a 9 6 16th bit. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to, <laughs> this is all extra credit, you don't have to do this, is I'm gonna use these to locate it, get it in place, and I'm gonna use my largest bit, I don't actually have a 916, so that's another reason, and just use it as a locator to witness, to mark the spot that I need to drill without having to do any damage to these potential holes here. So now what I'll do is, Pull this thing off, get it out of the way for now, and my bolts. And you'll see right here now, I have a witness mark to actually get through to drill the frame. And what I'll do is I'll just put a step bit in, in the size that I need. Oh, here's a tip. Instead of just putting shavings all over the garage floor to sweep up. Let's go ahead and catch them. Looks like we got it. I'm gonna pull this all off. I'm gonna clean this area up and then I'm just gonna fog some black paint inside here. There's these little standoffs that go in between here and here. So uh, pretty much get ready for some finger gymnastics here in the next few minutes because this is gonna take a lot of finagling. So you gotta just have some patience and we'll get this thing dialed. So get your little standoff in place and then get your lower bolt through. So then this spacer goes up in through here. A quick tip for the top one and the flag nut is to just eyeball it first. There you are. And then keep your fingers as still as possible while you thread this in. And that's an easy way to get that started. Now, if you guys have been watching the last couple of videos, you know that we just did the Ultimate Dana 44 in the front, and this is the stock Dana 44 rear, and that's why I'm not spending a lot of time gussying it up and making it pretty, because it's the last key in the foundation equation in the rebuild of the Jeep. Uh, gonna figure out what to do there. Thinking Dana 60 is gonna be enough for me. A lot of everybody has their opinions on what should go here and what is best, but, uh, I think that's what's gonna be best for me. But this is a good example, actually, <laughs> while I'm here, of why um, that's one of the big things that I was attracted to in the Ultimate Dana 44 front was that, see these flanges, see the metal here? Uh, and see how I just, when you bash them in rocks, they bend easily? Well, uh, having thicker metal there is to help prevent that. So that's the point. <laughs>
of this exercise is to prevent that. But for now, just get the crescent wrench and I may need a hammer, a little bit more persuasion to get that fixed up, but we will. And then we'll hoist this into place. So now it's time to get these gorgeous six pack shocks into the back here. Now, again, one of the big things here of, of going, I upgraded on my six packs for the rear since I had the 3.5 uh, game changer before. I'm going with the four and a half nap and with the DB3 drop brackets, I'm going with the longer. So I had the 26 inch uh, fully extended six packs. Now I'm going with the 28 inch fully extended. So that just gives me even more suspension travel. I've been really happy with them and I'm very, very picky about my shocks. These are specific to the side back here. So this is JKRD, driver side. So that's where we're working. We're gonna use our bar pin eliminators here. And this is what enables you to mount these right into the stock location, which is cool. it's definitely gonna need the longer brake lines. There's no way <laughs> these are gonna reach down here. So we'll handle that later, but there you go. Axle is in and hanging under its own. Let's now get it up on its own weight. And let's see what we got. I went ahead and installed the new sway bar end links. These are another inch longer than the older ones. Uh, a quick tip on the other side is to reroute this brake line or and or file the, the grind the back of this bolt off just so that it gives it some clearance. We're gonna kind of see. Uh, I never had problems on this side because when this goes to full stuff, it actually cheats the axle over a little bit. So we'll, we'll, we'll suss all of that stuff out, but we're in the home stretch now, guys. Um, the Jeep is under its own weight. Everything's installed. Um, now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and in swap out these brake lines for this one inch longer brake line, just so we can make sure to get to full droop without yanking these things out. Let me just show you how I'm gonna touch this up and make this blend with this stuff here. And that's with my, my toolbox buddy. First off, what you wanna do is obviously cover up any brake components. You don't want to get this stuff on them. So I'll just do a little bit of that action. And then you just give it a good uh, bit of spray like this. And then just wipe it in. See how that blends right there? That is the secret to just keeping your junk looking super fly all the time. A little bit of semi-gloss spray paint and a little bit of toolbox buddy and look at that all right so now it's time to go into time lapse mode and tighten everything torque everything to spec and then go get the wheels and tires and set it on the ground so here we go sit on the ground on its tires. Now, the one thing that I've noticed is that it's substantially taller. It's more than one inch taller than the 3.5. Uh, it's not gonna fit out of the garage. So we're gonna give it up. We're losing light. Uh, it took a full weekend. So it's Sunday night now. Uh, <laughs> we'll get it going tomorrow morning. We'll get it aligned uh, and go drive it and just get our initial impressions with this thing. But look, yeah. It was a lot of work. All right, that was a good weekend. Well, howdy. Today it's test drive day. Now, uh, a really cool thing about these videos is sometimes you get these cool tips. I'm always learning. I'm never gonna pretend to be a know-it-all. Uh, a couple of cool commenters said, try the string technique for the alignment next time. And that is as simple as it sounds. 
tie a string around all four tires, about the center of the hub height. Then you have a very easy visual to compare front to rear axles to make sure you got the vehicle square. And then getting it out of the garage was another thing, so I just decided to drop the air pressure down to 5 psi all the way around and see if that worked. Alright, here we go. Let's get this thing out of the garage. Guess we should look. Okay, we're clear, we're clear. Oh, it's close. Oh my goodness, it is close. It's hard to drive a stick and hang out. Oh man, it might just rub right there. Okay, we're out. nice to know to have a fun new technique to get it on the road and just to have this kind of feel right out of the garage Are you kidding me it's good here's what I hope to either find the Jeeper that's about to pick their first suspension upgrade just commit go this way it's just gonna be the answer for you it's amazing this is exactly what I've ever wanted from it and we haven't even touched the dirt yet and then also, if this finds the Jeeper that's just looking for that little bit extra, a little bit more, this is the one. It's the easiest way to go long arms that I've found, and it's this good. We're hitting this twisty canyon road, one hand, I'm a hand talker. It's that good, right? Let's go find some dirt. And then we'll touch some dirt in this cool little wash here off of Soledad Canyon. It's just, just kind of a, a favorite place of mine to go. Kind of wish I brought Pinto now, but hustling up that canyon and her with these open doors, not a good combo in my mind, so we'll sit out for this one, but we'll get her out on one of these trips. Actually, it's time to do a bunch of trips. Now, I didn't air down everything. Uh, I run 28 cold, and it seems to have, after hustling up the canyon and on the freeway to get here, up to 32 all the way around. I'm not gonna air down right now on this little, this, this doesn't need it, but for comfort I might. But I'm just gonna let the shocks and the springs do their job right now and really feel them out. <clears throat> I could just tell right now that having the taller springs makes a huge difference right there. Just, I can't believe how much more comfortable and plush this is. I didn't realize that, you know, at three and a half inch lift, you just were closer, much closer to the bump stops. Now you have more coils. Uh, I like it and I expect a lot from my vehicles as you guys have seen on this channel. I drive them hard and expect a lot. Already 
just tiptoeing through here. This is just plush and comfy. Jeez. And I haven't even unlocked the lock and load. We're not even gonna need to today, but stay tuned. We're gonna get out and take this thing up to Gorman. We'll do a good test in tune and unlock that thing, and I'll show you all of the benefits of that. But for now, boy, am I enjoying this. Ah, oh, I would say this was a success. I mean, really. Oh, God. This is so nice. So there you have it, the 4.5 inch lock and load long arm for Metal Cloak. Couple of day install, roll over into Monday, intermediate level, just because there's a little bit of welding and stuff, but here it is, guys. Yeah, I love it. I love it, I love it. Stay tuned for more videos as we test this thing out. Plus, I have a whole other Jeep I'm about to do and throw one tons under and the same exact suspension, so there's tons more content. Make sure you're subscribed, hit the notifications, and thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, remember to enjoy your drive. I am gonna do this until dark, until tomorrow. I don't, I don't wanna stop.